Hey guys, welcome back to 22 Lima Romeo, where we focus on the competitive side of the rimfire world. We are back out here at NCRGC, filming the 2023 June NRL 22 Course of Fire, brought to you by us. We designed this Course of Fire with the experienced shooter in mind, so expect some small targets, expect some transitions, and expect some memory games. We hope you guys enjoy it. We're gonna get out there, set up some targets, and get this thing going. First stage for this month, remember to reapply. We have a one and a half at 40, two inch at 60, and a two and a half at 70. We're gonna start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in, action open. On the start signal, we will assume a position on the lowest ladder rung and engage the targets with one shot each in the following order, moving positions up the ladder after every three shots. First rung, near to far. Second rung, far to near. Third rung, far to near again. Fourth rung, near to far. All shots are hit or miss, move on. Shoot ready. Three, two, one, engage. All right, guys, getting things going with remember to reapply. For this stage, we'll be using the Grayout CNC Mini Plate Pro, the Armageddon Gear Mini Plate Pro Pad, and the Wee Bad Strapless Behemoth. Now, you guys have seen this equipment used on a lot of previous videos. You shouldn't be surprised that that's what I'm using for this ladder. Now, for this month's course of fire, there's going to be three elements that kind of reappear in each stage. That is fundamental position building, time management, and shot sequence memorization. So starting this month off, we have four different positions that we're gonna be shooting from and a little bit of confusion during the shot sequence. And that was kind of by design. You see, the idea here is to move quickly through your targets from each different position. So having your dope memorized going into the stage and having a good solid game plan for how you're gonna build each position on the ladder rungs is really gonna help you to manage your time as you make your way through the stage. For this one, I do not recommend dialing. I just don't think there's gonna be enough time for you to get those dials spun and still get all 12 shots off under two minutes. Now, something that you can do to help aid in the stability of your rifle is to reach up over the top of the optic as you guys have seen me do in a lot of previous videos when I'm shooting off of ladders. I reach up over the top of the optic, I grab a hold of the rail of the ladder between my thumb and my forefinger, and I take the heel of my palm and I apply a little bit of pressure down into the bell of the optic, pressing it into the bag on the rung, which really does help stabilize that rifle, which should help you to manage your time. Something else to note when you're shooting this stage is that the shot sequence changes almost every rung that you shoot. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Let's get on to the next one. Time. 10 seconds left. All right, next up for June, we have sand castles. We have a three inch at 100 yards. We're gonna start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the star signal, we will engage the target in the following order and manner. Five gallon bucket, three shots. Two gallon bucket, two shots. Back of the chair for three shots. Seat of the chair, two shots. All shots are hit or miss, move on. Restrictions, no bipods may touch the ground. Three, two, one, engage. Keeping the summer theme going, we've got some sand castles to build. For my gear on this stage, I'll be using the Armageddon Gear Schmedium and the Wee Bad Trapless Behemoth. Now, I've seen a lot of varying strategies for shooting off of these buckets. Some guys and gals like to shoot off the five gallon bucket from a prone position. I personally cannot do that. I usually take this kind of folded up modified sitting position where my daughters can fold up like frogs and they can shoot really stably from this five gallon bucket. Now I always shoot from the two gallon bucket in a prone position and I use that wee bad straps behemoth as a rear bag which gives me a lot of stability when shooting off that prop. Now for the chair, I don't really feel like there's ever a good way to shoot off the back of a chair. I kind of get a little flustered when I'm shooting off the back of the chair for this stage because my original plan was to actually use the behemoth as the rear bag off the seat of the chair, but I quickly realized that that's just not gonna fly and I have to put the strapless behemoth on my knee in a kneeling position to actually get the stability that I was looking for to break these three shots. Now, things always get complicated when you have to shoot off the seat of a chair. When you're thinking about how you're gonna shoot off the seat of that chair, you're gonna have to make a decision on what bag or lack of bag you're gonna have to use because 
you need to be able to see. And if you have a bag that's too tall, the back of that chair may obstruct your view entirely. So have a plan, stick to it, but always be ready to think on the fly. Speaking of flies, let's get on to the next one. Clean. 21 seconds left. Next up for June, those pesky summertime flies. We have a quarter and half inch on a KYL rack at 45. We have a three quarter and one inch on a KYL rack at 60. We're going to start standing rifle and all gear in hand, mag in, action open. On the star signal, we will take a prone supported position and engage the targets with one shot each, large to small, far to near. You will then switch to support side and engage the targets with one shot each in reverse order, near to far, small to large. You will then transition back to strong side and engage the quarter inch near, then the three quarter inch far targets with one shot each. Note, this is the bonus point stage, where you earn 0.1 bonus points per second remaining on the clock. Three, two, one, engage. Like summertime flies, there's no getting away from KYL racks. But this isn't your run of the mill KYL rack. This one's got a little spice. For this stage, I'll be using the Harris SBRM bipod with the Really Right Stuff Arc Adapter and the Armageddon Gear Schmedium in heavy fill as a rear bag. So for this stage, the shot sequence was intentionally meant to be kind of confusing. But when you really think about it and you break it down, it's actually just large to small and then small to large. Just have to switch sides right in the middle. The thing that's designed to kind of mess you up a little bit is the fact that the large targets are actually at 60 yards. I think the best strategy for the stage is actually to really slow yourself down when shooting this stage because even though it's the time stage, you shouldn't let that distract you from the fact that you should really try your hardest to hit all 10 of these shots, even though I mess up and I only hit nine. That was just a total mental mistake. You guys will see here in just a second. So something that I noticed while I was shooting support side was that although the fundamentals for my right hand, my strong hand trigger finger are really solid, my follow through is usually instinctual. That follow through is almost non-existent on my support hand. A bit of advice that I can give you on this one is get real familiar with that parallax knob for this stage because you're going to be going back and forth between your two ranges and you're going to need those targets to be crystal clear and the only way you're going to achieve that is with that parallax knob So I'm going to interrupt the video here for a second and introduce you guys to something that we decided to do for you. We decided not to monetize on the channel and that really does give us some freedom on this YouTube channel to continue A, producing the kind of content we want to create and B, keep you from ever having to watch ads when you tune in to see how we're going to shoot the monthly course of fire videos. The channel could always use your support. So we decided to join a site called buymeacoffee.com where you can contribute a cup of coffee to help keep us caffeinated while we're out there filming these videos for you guys month after month. If you feel so inclined, please visit www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash 22 Lima Romeo and contribute to the channel. All right, let's get back out there, get some more shooting done. Next up, we've got some campfire stories. We have a two inch at 76, a two and a half at 87, and a three inch at 98. We're going to start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in, action open. On the start signal, we will build a position on one quadrant of the tire and engage the targets near to far with one shot each. Then move to another quadrant of the tire and repeat the engagement. Repeat this engagement two more times. You may only use each quadrant of the tire once. All targets are hit or miss, move on. Note, when shooting from the front quadrant, you may incorporate the rear quadrant for support. Restrictions. No part of the bipod may touch the ground. Ready? Three, two, one, engage. Who doesn't love campfire stories? For my gear on the stage, I'll use the Grab CNC Mini Plate Pro and the Armageddon Gear Schmedium. This is another one that really utilizes time management as a key strategy to be successful. In order to get all 12 shots off, you're gonna have to be quick when you're building your positions. 
fumbling around with your bags, not having a good solid plan going into how you're going to build a position on each quadrant of the tire is really going to slow you down. So for the left, right, and back quadrants, I'm going to use the Armageddon Gear Schmedium as my front bag, and then I'm actually going to use my knee as the rear support for the stock of the rifle. Now when building these first three positions, I'm essentially going to take the same exact position at each quadrant. So I'm going to be seated on my left hip, I'll have my right knee up, I'll be anchoring the stock of the rifle onto that right knee, and trying to aid in the stability of the stock to keep me leveled up for these three shots per quadrant. Now, the clear choice for the front quadrant was actually to use a bipod and a rear bag. That was kind of my intention when I designed the stage. So, if you're at a match and your match director says, well, you can't use the rear bag because you've already used that quadrant, just say, hey, I watched 22 Lima Romeo's videos. He's the guy who designed the course of fire, and he says, I can use a bag. If you need to, refer back to this video for evidence. I hope that one plays your time management skills. Let's get on to the fifth and final stage Six for this course of fire. Drop two. Drop two? Yeah. Wrapping up June, we have our favorite thing of the summer, the Home Depot run. We have a one and a one and a half inch on two double hangers at 50 yards, no more than 10 yards apart, and a four inch at 100. We're going to start standing, rifle grounded by the prop, magazine out, and 10 feet away, all gear in hand and action open. On the start signal, you'll retrieve your magazine and move to your rifle to build a position on the sawhorse. Engage the targets as follows. Left large target, right large target, left small target, right small target, then the far target. You will then conduct a mag change and build a position on the cinder block and repeat the engagement. Restrictions. Your bipod cannot touch the ground. Now wrapping this month's course of fire up, what would summer be without a few Home Depot runs. For my gear on the stage, I'll be using the Greop CNC Mini Plate Pro, the Armageddon Gear Schmedium, and the Wee Bad Straps Behemoth. You know, pretty much what I use for almost every stage. So as the timer starts, what I'm going to do is take my bag and I'm going to put it directly in position on the sawhorse where I'm going to be shooting from for that first volley. Then I'm going to run back to the bucket where I've got my magazine stored, grab my magazine, run back over to the rifle, now, off of a sawhorse, a one and a half and a one inch target are going to be kind of challenging because those are relatively small targets for the balancing act of shooting off of the sawhorse. I think you, you have the option to take your time for this first engagement. For the first four shots, I recommend you take your time and try to make those impacts because you're going to be able to speed things up quite a bit once you transition to the cinder block. that is a wrap for the June 2023 NRL 22 course of fire. We hope you guys enjoyed it. We hope you found it a little more challenging than last month's. That was kind of the intent of the design was to push some of the more experienced shooters in the group. So let me know down in the comments below if you guys loved it, if you hated it, if you're indifferent, if you thought it was just right or not quite difficult enough. Uh, I'll keep that in mind if I decide to do another one of these in the future. Uh, I hope to see you out on the range.